Hi, welcome back. Today I want to do a video of setting up GPU encoding inside of DaVinci Resolve Studio on Linux, specifically on AMD cards using VA API. As you can see, I am running uh, Arch Linux. I have Zen kernel installed. But if you look here, you can see it is a Radeon RX 7900 GRE, a Radeon GPU. I am running the uh, Mesa drivers, but I do have Rockham installed for DaVinci Resolve. But as you can see, I have uh, this installed here for uh, video editing. As you can see, I can scrub through footage perfectly fine inside of DaVinci Resolve Studio. But something that happens for AMD users is when you go to the Deliver tab, you'll see here, right now I have it set to QuickTime. And usually what'll happen is you won't have these H.264, H.265 options. You'll have MPEG for CPU-based encoding and it'll give you a linear PCM audio. Okay, but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show the install process here. I'm actually going to save my project real quick, just because it is a test. What you wanna do, this is one of the options, is this DVCPVA API. One of the contributors is Gloria Sagrol. This one you will need to download. And it specifically says you need to put the contents of this release into the IO plugins folder, which if I go here, I can go into my root directory, opt, I'm going to right click on the resolve folder and I'm going to, where is it at? Open as administrator. So once it loads that, I've already created the IO plugins folder. If you don't have it, you can create new folder as long as you can open this in a uh, root you would open terminal inside the resolve folder and do open terminal here and you would do mkdir with sudo in front of it actually. You would do sudo, you would do sudo mkdir and then you would do io plugins if you need to do it from the terminal. Most Linux distros should have the stuff set up to have this folder. And you want to go into the releases, download the bundle, the zip file. And that should be in your downloads folder. So you'll extract it, extract here. And then you have everything in this folder here. Now, I'm just gonna right click, select copy, go into the IO plugins. I already have this in here, but I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in again. I'm going to write into, apply all, overwrite. Now this other plugin here, you will be asked for your root password. So, or your pseudo password. Okay, this other one right here, that one you can, act, it's got a few more features. This other one, it allows CPU based encoding. It's actually this other one here, and I'll link all of these in the uh, description. But this is the uh, FFmpeg encoder plugin. This one, Right now is on a 1.1 release, 
but it has supported encoders H.264, and it says X.264 or VAAPI, all the way down to AV1. And the beauty of this, click here, there's an AUR package. So if you have Arch and Arch-based distribution, I use uh, Yay on mine. I can do Yay. And it is DaVinci FFM Peg Encoder Plugin. You hit enter in that, you'll hit one, you'll install it. I already have it installed. But once you have them set up on your system, once they're in the folder, and obviously the, the AOR package is going to automatically put it in there for you, you can go back into DaVinci Resolve, and both of these packages, you have to have DaVinci Resolve Studio, or it will not work. So if I go back into my VA API test, under QuickTime, I can select a codec, if I scroll, now here you have the CPU-based one. Well, here, let's uh, specify here. No, not QuickTime. If I scroll down here, I can select H.264 and H.265 for VA API. These are the ones from the first one that Gloria Sagroll contributed to. And... These two here are from the FFmpeg one. So, because it, it lets you select CPU or GPU. Now, in order to get AV1, you do need to go into MPEG4. <laughs> and you have AV1. And you have AV1 CPU encoding. Okay. Now, that's the FFmpeg one. <laughs> you can go to the VA API, AV1, and this is the Glorious Egg Roll one. The biggest difference that I notice when I just go, uh, let's see, AV1 here, it doesn't give you a bunch of options. But if you use the Glorious Egg Roll one, the reason I like that one more, let me go select the codec, go down to VA API AV1. You get 8-bit and 10-bit options with the ones from uh, Glorious, the one that Glorious Egg Roll is contributing to. And with me recording video with a Lumix S5 II that shoots 10-bit 422 video in log, this would let me color grade in HDR and output in 10 bit. Now it is going to do 420 10 bit though, however, just so people are aware of that. But it is very good. And let's see, I tend to just use the QuickTime one though, because it does encode faster. And same here, the Glory Segroll one. You get your 8-bit, 10-bit. Hopefully, they plan on expanding it. But to make things easier, you could just install the FFmpeg one from the AUR. Do that. Set your stuff. You get your... I like to go to this encoder preset on this one and on the one that Glory Segroll commits to. Set it to quality. And then I'll just change this to like 20 for the quality rate factor. It is going to produce linear PCM 24-bit in this, in the QuickTime. But if you go to MKV, you also have access to some of the stuff too. Okay, maybe not under MKV. Let's see. Let's go to MPEG-4. If you're in this, you're going to get flack in MPEG-4, and that's with all these different versions it's going to produce FLAC. Okay, um, you can select other versions. Let's go to VA API AV1, see what it shows, FLAC. 
But if you go to QuickTime, you can select one of these and you can go to MP3 to get a smaller file if you would like. Me, I'm probably going to start encoding in AV1 and just uploading to YouTube in AV1 format because it will produce a smaller file. But you will, um, you will lose quality by using H.265. Not much. It's minuscule. I've tested AV1 against H.265. The main reason AV1 is I do prefer it is because it's an open standard. But as you see, you have your encoder device. So if you have more than one VA API capable card, I'm assuming this would work with a, with a Intel GPU or possibly on an NVIDIA GPU using the NVK open source drivers. Since on uh, those drivers, the NVIDIA card would just default to VA API. But if you go here, quality, audio linear PCM, I'll just say videos. I'll leave it untitled. It's at H.265. Add to render queue. If I hit render, it's not going to encode very good because I am encoding right now in OBS, but the encoder media engine on this RDNA3 card and even on RDNA4 is even better. It can handle up to two streams at a time. <laughs> so and my CPU usage is at 4% in OBS Studio. The biggest thing I like though, I mean, the encoder speed, GPU encoding I have found with AMD and NVIDIA, CPU encoding is faster. However, the thing I like about this, my CPU temp is nice and low. 53 Celsius, you know, some people might think that's high, but, it, you know, most games run at that temp. And if you're running an Intel CPU, your temp's higher than that on an Intel chip anyways. <laughs> But this is almost done. We're going to let it render out really quick. And then we'll check the quality of it. I did leave it at 22 just for demonstration. But for future videos that I upload to YouTube, they're probably going to be encoded in AV1. Just to save a uh, storage space on my computer. But this definitely does make it to where I see zero purpose to ever go back to an NVIDIA card now. Now that I have GPU encoding under Linux with an AMD card in DaVinci Resolve Studio. So we've got this here. Double click it to go into it. This is the encode. Let's see. Let me right click properties, details, BT709, PCM 24 bit, HEVC. So this definitely came out of DaVinci Resolve. So again, the picture quality is very, very good. Uh, it's pretty much indistinguishable from the actual recording. AV1 would be a little bit better, but definitely uh, you can use the FFmpeg one from the AUR. I mean, both of them are using FFmpeg anyways. So you could just use this, the FFmpeg one, if you're just recording content for YouTube. But if you're doing anything professional or maybe you want to output in 10 bit, use the one from Glorious Egg Roll. It'd be nice if they added a 422 support to the 10 bit output. I know uh, FFmpeg does support that. Earth, 
but 420 is perfectly fine. And honestly, just Rex 709, which is the default for probably 99% of everybody's videos on YouTube anyways. You know, but this definitely I do like because now I can really output a ton of uh, videos and not worry about my CPU temps just being up really high from a day of rendering videos. You know, I do feel the GPU is just better suited for that. And you know, this actually makes DaVinci Resolve even more usable with open source drivers now because of the encoder plugin or the export plugin support in DaVinci Resolve Studio. You now have perfectly good support for uh, exporting out videos in DaVinci Resolve. Now, obviously only in the studio version, of course, but as you can see, works really good. But uh, let me know. Uh, I might do some benchmarks, possibly against the VA API encoder and the AMF encoder under Windows 11, just to see if there's any difference and if there's possibly a quality difference. But let me know. Like, subscribe, comment below, share the video, and I will see you next time. Later.